The next function we want to take a look at is changing the system settings. In this menu, we'll be able to change the number of sensors we have attached to the display board, the amount of dwell time used between sensor display changes, and the low and high PO2 alarm set points. In order to enter this menu, we need to have a low PO2 alarm. You can see here that we have a low PO2 alarm indicated on our PO2 alarm LEDs. If your PO2 is above your low PO2 alarm set point, you will not be able to enter the system settings menu. In order to enter the system settings menu, we're going to follow the same procedure we use to enter the sensor calibration menu. But this time, we're going to wait for the amber sensor LEDs to light a third time. The procedure will be to press the control button until we see the amber sensor LEDs flash three times. The third time we see them light up, We'll then release the control button to enter the system settings menu. We're now in the system settings menu. When we're in the system settings menu, there are a number of parameters that we can change and we need to be able to keep track of where we are in the menu so we know what setting we're modifying. To do that, we're going to use the decimal points on the digital panel meter to keep track of which menu step we're currently at. Here we see the four steps in the menu system and their associated decimal point position. Step one is changing the number of sensors attached to the display board. Step two is the amount of dwell time between displaying subsequent sensor readings. Step three is the high PO2 alarm set point, And step four is the low PO2 alarm set point. In the future, there may be more options, so please refer to your owner's manual. Let's run through the steps again. Step one is to change the number of sensors attached to the display board. Step two is to modify the amount of dwell time between displaying subsequent sensor readings. Step three is to change the high PO2 alarm set point. And step four is to change the low PO2 alarm set point. Astute electronic types will note that the decimal position can be interpreted as a binary value which reflects the number of the menu step that we're at. This format is used often as part of the Gorilla Diving Products PO2 monitor system. Here we see the display board in the setup menu. Note that the digital panel meter decimal point is in the extreme right position, indicating that we're currently at step one in the menu. This step allows you to modify the number of sensors you have connected to the display board. We also see that the number three amber sensor LED is lit, signifying that we are currently monitoring three sensors. To change the number of sensors installed, we'll press the control button and the amber sensor LEDs will light to indicate the number of sensors to monitor. Sensor 1 for 1 sensor, sensor 2 for 2 sensors, and sensor 3 for 3 sensors. We'll now leave it programmed to monitor 2 sensors. Now that we've changed the number of sensors to monitor, we'll step to the next menu option. We do this by rapidly pressing the control button 3 times. We then enter our next menu selection, number two, as indicated by the decimal point position on the display. In this menu, we can change the amount of time that the system displays each sensor value from one second to seven seconds. We can tell how long the display will show the sensor value on the digital panel meter by looking at the amber sensor LEDs. Each amber sensor LED represents a decimal value of one for the right LED a decimal value of 2 for the center LED, and a decimal value of 4 for the left LED. Since we currently have the center and right LED lit, we currently have a time of 1 plus 2, or 3 seconds display time. And by pressing the button, we increment our value. So we've gone up to a value of 4. We press it again, that's 4 and 5. The deck press the button again, we're up to four, five, six, and we press the button again. Now if we add those all up, we're at a value of seven. Now that would be seven seconds in between displaying the sensor values. When we press the button one more time, we wrap around to the beginning, and now we have one second, two seconds, three seconds, and four seconds. In order to step to the next menu, we press the button three times. We can see by the decimal points that we're now at the third menu option, which is the high PO2 alarm set point. 
The high PO2 alarm LED is lit, indicating that when we press the button, we will increase the PO2 alarm set point. We can see that currently we have a high PO2 alarm set point of 1.4. So let's increase the set point value to 1.5 by pressing or holding the button. We're now at a high PO2 alarm set point of 1.5. If we'd like to decrement the value, we press the button twice. We'll now lower the value, increase, press the button twice. We're now back at a value of 1.5. In order to step to the next menu, we press the button three times. We can see by the decimal points that we are now at the fourth menu option, our low PO2 alarm set point. This menu operates the same as our high PO2 alarm set point menu. The high PO2 alarm LED is lit, indicating that when I press the button, the value will increase. So let's increase our set point to a value of 0.9. and we're now at a low PO2 alarm set point of 0.9. Currently changing the low PO2 alarm set point is the last option in the system settings menu. When I press the button three times to step to the next menu selection, the amber sensor LEDs will blink four times and we'll wrap back to option one of the system settings menu. We can see by the decimal points that we're back at option one, the number of sensors attached to the display board. The amber sensor LEDs indicate that we have two sensors attached to the display board. Pressing the button three times again takes us to menu option two, dwell time between sensor toggles, and we can see that it's set for four seconds. Step to the third menu option, high PO2 alarm set point, and we see that our high PO2 alarm set point is at 1.5. Step to the next menu option, low PO2 alarm set point, and we see that our low PO2 alarm set point is set at 0.9. We're again at the end of our current menu options, so pressing the button three times will wrap us back around to the start of the menu options. We're now back at option one in the menu system. To exit the system settings menu, press the button four times. We enter the power-up routine with all the LEDs lit and our battery voltage displayed. We then enter our normal operating routine. You can see that we're now displaying two sensors. Our low PO2 alarm set point is set for below a PO2 value of 0.9. and our high PO2 alarm is set for a value above 1.5. Our current dwell time between displaying sensor values is also set for four seconds. One aspect of the menu selection process I would like to talk about is when you press and hold the control button and are waiting to access one of the menus. If you release the control button when the three amber sensor LEDs are not lit, then the program will continue its normal operation. Let's try that again. Press and hold the control button. Release the control button when the amber sensor LEDs are off and the program continues its normal operation. Should for some reason the control button stick, you'll notice that the three amber sensor LEDs will flash as usual, prompting you to toggle the backlight on or off, enter the sensor calibration menu, or enter the system setup menu. The program will then continue monitoring your sensors as usual.
When the button is finally released, the program will continue to function as normal. Two tools I would recommend for the maintenance of your display board are a quality jeweler's screwdriver for tightening the screws on the header connector and also a quality pair of wire strippers for stripping the insulation on the power, external heads-up display, and sensor wires. I'm using a pair of Ideal T-strippers and I'd also purchase the wire strippers in the 24 to 32 gauge range. This concludes the section on modifying your system settings.